Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel for a brand new video on F1 2019. We're here for episode number 4 in actually episode number 5 in Baku. And yeah, one of the tracks that I've traditionally haven't really done well, even though I think last year on F1 2018, which I didn't really like the game, uh, I think I did had quite a good race, even though we didn't finish in the points. But still, it's a very tough track, but it's changed through the years um, because the game, you know, gets different and they change the tracks pretty much. And I think this year they made, they made the track a little bit more realistic, so it's a, a much, much better representation of the real uh, Baku circuit. So let's get into into it let's get into practice starting off onto practice one with uh, the track acclimatization test and um, for this race uh, there has been a huge change to the career mode uh, I've uh, low I've reduced the difficulty uh, down to uh, a hundred and uh, a hundred on the gendery so from a hundred and five on the ultimate AI I have put it down to a hundred on legendary and we will move it back to 103 ultimate AI probably on the second part of the season that's where I'm planning to move back up it depends on how much I improve as a driver and all but I think I'm gonna be in a much better condition both me and the car uh, by like Belgium I guess or Monza you know by the time the second part of the season begins I'm gonna be putting the difficulty back up to 103 or 105 it will depend really on uh, my driving pretty much but uh, I've also turned traction off so from then and on I just want to get a little bit used to medium traction for the first couple of uh, races and now from back when on it's just gonna be off traction so expect me to make some mistakes I guess a little bit of a spoiler here but yeah if I make any mistakes I'm sorry it's just uh, my first race on uh, off traction on F1 2019, so I need to get slightly used to it and from then on I think we will do much much better and as you can see we were very good on the track organization test, a good tire management test and onto the fuel test I had a pretty tough one, first lap was not very good, the second lap was pretty okay and then on the third lap I had to do, I had to actually fight with the fuel in order to improve and uh, as you can see still on the green and as we went through that uh, third sector try to improve a little bit there try to go a little bit lift and coast and uh, through the final real corner then we've got a sequence of corners which you can go flat out through and uh, we just about got the perfect result as you can see at the same time I had a slight issue with my throttle and I still have it I need to clean up my pedals which I'm very bored to do actually but I need, really need to clean up both my brake pedal and my throttle pedal because they sometimes the throttle pedal is a little bit uh, uh, you know it's not exactly as I'm pushing the throttle it just goes up and down and might not be on 100% it happens from time to time you know so I need to pretty much clean it and the brake sometimes just uh, it's just enabled without me even pressing it so it just happens you know I think uh, you just need a little bit of cleaning and then it will be okay again even though I'm trying to buy trying to invest in a new wheel probably a Fanatec one or a Thrasmaster one because I've had this Logic G29 for five years or four years so it's a little bit boring you know to have this this wheel for such a long time practice one was over uh, it was a very very successful uh, day with uh, three out of the four practice programs that we've done uh, being perfected uh, the final one being the I think when which one did we not perfect I think it was the ERS test I'm not really sure about that so sorry about that but we had a very good practice one and uh, I've actually made up plenty of resource points and I was ready to do some upgrades and as you can see the our the aero upgrade front wing uh, front flap something like that main flap has failed so we're gonna do that again and uh, probably we'll need to work a little bit on the quality control of the aero department and as you can see, quality um, time, qualifying practice program test, didn't really go to plan. That's all I'm just going to say for the time being. It just, it just, I just couldn't find pace on qualifying for some weird reason. On the exits, I lost plenty of time. And as you can see now, onto the start finish straight, losing even more time on the straights, which is really weird. Because on the previous test, on the straights, I would gain time, whereas on the qualifying, I just lost time. So, 
I just failed on the qualifying practice program test. Pretty weird to see. Considering I, I do pretty okay on qualifying. I'm not really the best qualifier. Uh, forget China. Uh, that was just a track I could not get on with. And onto the race strategy test, which is pretty much uh, checking out the pace that you're gonna have on the race, the tire wear, the fuel. It's a test that actually shows off how you do on all aspects of uh, the race pace. Tires, fuel, ERS, and uh, most of all, uh, race pace, the timing, the times that you can set on a set of mediums, on a set of softs, whatever you choose to do. And uh, here you can see we done, we've done pretty okay. Uh, the second lap was actually uh, cancelled due to Hamilton uh, trying to okay, overtake me, so I lost so plenty of time. And at that point, focused. we've actually completed the test, and I had one more lap. I had to do that one lap quite good, and we've done that. We perfected that test as well. And practice two was pretty much over. Escaped practice three. I don't really do any any laps on practice three because uh, on practice three uh, the team automatically uses the racing gearbox, so I don't really want to uh, wear out the gearbox just about yet. And that's the overall resource points we're gonna get from this second practice. And without further ado, we're just gonna go on to qualifying. Uh, as you can see, the reputation of the team is growing slightly as the time goes on. You know, we had a Horrific start to the season. We haven't yet scored any points. I don't think even Lando has Lando scored points. Yeah, Lando has scored points in China where he did very well. Whereas I just retired. I just couldn't drive the car. I, I know most of you are gonna go me like a. Uh, is that a kind of thing? Give up? I don't know if that's a word, but I gave up in China. I just didn't have any pay, so I just gave up on the car. But I'm probably not gonna do that again now that I've reduced the level to 100. I think things are going to be a little bit easier for me until I get used to the game. When I, when, I'm, when I think that I'm going to be on a good level and I can compete a lot with the AI, then I'm going to go back to Ultimate. As you can see, through the castle section, I, I slightly touched the right wall and I lost plenty of time there. So, there is still time to find on another lap. But, silly me, uh, this is my one and only lap on Q1. I just didn't want to do another lap so that I could have more sets on Q2. That's That was my idea, passing to Q2 and then have more sets to go through to Q3 with uh, a two set, so a double chance to go through to Q2 um, or a triple chance, you know. See it as you want. And actually it was a decent lap, it was only 9 tenths slower than Lewis Hamilton, so I, was thought, so I thought, okay, that's a good lap, you know. Not really going to do any more laps. And I was pretty secure at the point, at the time. I also saw that I was 5 tenths faster than uh, Lucas Weber, 3 tenths faster than Lucas Weber, who was 16th. So I was like, okay, we're gonna go through for sure. But you know, uh, I stop here the timing, thinking about going out, and then I'm like, nah, let's just do this. It's pretty easy, we're gonna make it. And unfortunately, on the final minute, on the final minute, Lucas Weber is just gonna do that, 2 tenths found. I'm gonna be honest with you, if I would have gone on another set of softs, it would have been easily, I would have gone easily onto P12 because I lost time to the castle section, which I almost perfect at all times. But yeah, it's gonna be P16 for the race, interesting race ahead of us. Let's just get into it and see how the race pace is gonna go for us. Good afternoon and welcome to Baku. This was the arena, if you think back to 2017, of one of the most eventful races of modern history, with controversy behind the safety car, last second overtakes, and a historic podium for Williams and for Lance Stroll. So let's find out what lies in store for us this year. It's time for the Azerbaijan Grand Prix. With 20 turns and a length of 3.7 miles, Baku City Circuit in the heart of the Azerbaijan capital is a real test of a driver's endurance, patience and precision. 90 degree corners through Sector 1 lead into a tightening uphill sprint as we start to circle around the old city. Then a 1.4 mile chase flat out through Sector 3 towards the finish line. With me today, of course, is Anthony Davidson. Let's talk about Young. No grip penalties, no mitigating circumstances, just a poor qualifying performance and a very disappointing start position for them today. Yeah, it can be very disheartening when you have a bad qualifying session and even more so when you get to the grid for the race and you can't even see the start line because of all the cars ahead of you. It's just as well that Lucas has a reputation for hard work and determination as he's gonna need both today. Okay, be wary of the 
cars ahead breaking suddenly into one. We could ruin our race if we hit them. Good luck. Thanks for the warning, Jeff. So, a little message from Jeff. They're going to break early into turn one, so let's go for the dive bomb, for the classic dive bomb. I've actually had too many problems in the starts. Like, I cannot get a good, a proper good start in this game. I don't know what they... What have they really changed about the launching on this game? Why it's just... And I've always done it like that. Clutch, first gear, full revs, go. You know, it was very easy all those years. So I don't know what really has changed. Now with off traction, it might be better. We'll see. Firebird lights. It's lights out and away we go. We get off very well here. Giovinazzi can't really get a good start. Our launching was very good. This is a good start actually, surprisingly for me. I go up the inside of both Giovinazzi and I think that was a, a Renault of uh, Danny Ricciardo. I'm not really still going up the inside of Alexander Albon. Going for the move on Satoru Rosso. And uh, that's a move done. Now onto the slip trimming is Alexander Albon, the Honda engine versus the Renault engine. Surprisingly enough, and in real life, I mean, it's true. Uh, in game, the Renault engine, my engine, is the worst in the game. I'm even lower than, uh, slower in terms of engine than the original Renault team. So McLaren still has the worst top speed, but it's very good in terms of the sasses, of the sasses and uh, and the aerodynamics were very good as a midfield team. So all the improvements need to be made on the engine area, on the power units. And then we will look onto the sasses and the aerodynamics. So pretty much a little bit of durability, but we're good there. As we made a move up the inside of uh, the Ferrari engine, Alfa Romeo, I make a huge mistake here on the braking zone. Run wide into turn one, and that's the move lost. Uh, we couldn't stick the move and overtake Kimi Raikkonen. And that's at the same time, Daniel Ricciardo, the Renaults seem to be very fast in terms of race pace around this track. As uh, they've also got Nico Hulkeberg inside the points. And uh, now Raikkonen going side by side with Kevin Magnussen. That's a very good battle. And Raikkonen has dropped off a little bit. Ricciardo has made the move on him. But now me and Kimi Raikkonen have both DRS on Daniel Ricciardo, who seems to be under pressure now. We go around the outside of uh, Ricciardo. At the same time, Raikkonen is on the inside. Now I'm going to go side by side with Raikkonen. I seem to have a little bit of better top speed due to the overtake ERS mode. And into turn number one. This time I'm not going to mess up the brakes. It's going to be a double move and a great move by me into turn one. Up into P12 we are. And at the same time, it seems like my teammate has an immense pace. As, he's, as you can see on uh, my mirrors there, he went around the outside of Lando, of uh, Daniel Ricciardo. And now Lando Norris, talking about it, he seems to be going very well in this race so far. He's going to go up the inside of me. Very, very surprisingly enough, he has very good pace, Lando, here. And I can't really go for the re-overtake. I'm going to try and stay close to him. I think I made slight contact here. He's pretty, pretty slow through the corner. But he seems to be doing very well at the moment. He seems to be having a better pace than me. So, surprisingly enough, Lando is actually going to overtake me. And he's going to be ahead of me. But can we actually go back up the inside of Lando? I couldn't go for the dive, so I just didn't really try to go for it. Now probably up the inside into this corner. Couldn't make it. We couldn't make it and Lando is just uh, going to go away. Uh, he's going to move on with his race now. Darren Ricciardo up the inside and Kimi Raikkonen. We've seen that previously happening. I'm still going to try and maintain my position. Uh, Darren Ricciardo has lost the front end plate off, uh, here, off his front wing. And Ricciardo, very good defensive line here. Moving to the inside line to try and uh, stay ahead of me. But this time around with DRS up the inside into this corner. We're going to go up the inside of the Renault. A great move done, which is going to promote us back up to the point. Uh, P10 for me. I run a little bit wide there. So I'm a little bit under pressure from uh, both Ricciardo and Raikkonen. But I think Raikkonen has lost out of position now to a Red Bull, if I'm correct. And at the same time, Dana Ricciardo is going to try and overtake me, but I have different plans. I'm going to go for a pit stop on lap number 12, since my tires uh, have worn out quite massively. And I'm going into the pit stops, and Dana Ricciardo is going to come with me. Uh, he's in, we're now in P15 after the pit stop. Let's see where we're going to be after our pit stop is done. This is what our one and only pit stop. We're going onto the hard tires. The 2.2 pit stop, pretty solid from the McLaren team. 
Are we going to be behind the Williams of George Russell? And yes, we are going to be behind the Williams. He's going to have a better round through this corner. I'm actually going to let him through and take the DRS also. That's uh, quite good. And we're probably going to be making the move now on George Russell. We have a fully recharged ERS battery to try and push now on the hard tires. We have done a little bit of an undercap. Uh, Lucas Weber is... Uh, many seconds ahead of me and as Lando has also made his stop this is how the race pretty much is I'm trying to set my personal best laps and I'm in P13 Lando is in P12 he still has a very good pace Lando as you can see he's very close to the Haas and the Toro so he seems to be having a very good pace and he could probably get some points for the team in this race uh, in Baku I should have been here I should have been there fighting for points but unfortunately my pace just wasn't enough to go on and push for the points. As you can see, Lando Norris has probably been promoted up into P10 now after having overtaken both the Toros of Lucas Weber and Kevin Magnussen. He's doing very well, and surprisingly enough, he could actually push more and overtake even the Renault in the red As you can see, his pace is very good. He's having a very good race, whereas me, I'm just here sitting quietly in uh, P13, and nobody has attacked me. And nothing has pretty much happened. I see a yellow flag up ahead. It's probably Kevin Magnussen who has who is slowing down. Is it damage or mechanical issue? He seems to be going very slow, so I guess it's gonna be a mechanical issue. And uh, as we go through him, we can see Kevin Magnussen is out of the session. That's P12 for me. A free position gained. Uh, I mean, I deserve it. I'm faster than both Weber and Magnussen. So if I had a better qualifying session, the race wouldn't really be like that. But still. Props to Lando Norris for having uh, such an amazing pace and finishing in P10, probably, I think he is. I don't know if he has overtaken the the Red Bull, but still, I was, uh, I was having a very good pace. Nobody could really attack me, so I'm very happy about my race. Uh, unfortunately, we couldn't have such a better pace than uh, uh, Weber to actually go into P11. Uh, Lando had a better race, as for me, a very good race from P16 up into P12, even better for Lando, who got points in this race. I'm actually quite happy about my race, it was a very good race. Off a great victory here today. Talk to me, Ants, what was it that set them apart from the competition today? I'd say it was down once again to good, consistent driving. Nailing the corners, working to the track conditions and perfecting the team's strategies. They got all of these things right today and the results speak for themselves. I can see the drivers starting to approach the podium for the victory celebrations. A real team victory today. Everybody played their part. Congratulations then to Mercedes, your race winners today. Hamilton has been dominating my career mode. I think he hasn't lost a single race so far. I think he's won four out of four. So he's having a great season, Lewis Hamilton. As for me, the race was actually very good. The Dr. Ferrari is actually on the podium. That's unrealistic. I think we haven't seen that yet. Both the Ferraris in, on the podium. But still, a very good race. What a race from Lando Norris. Big ups to him. From 20th up into 10th, he's probably driver of the day 100%. He actually got points for the McLaren. As you can see, only two tenths behind Max Verstappen. Probably Verstappen had an issue with his car. Uh, I can't really explain his loss of pace. Time for the interviews. There wasn't much between you and Lucas by the finish today. Uh, he had a better qualifying, so that's why I think he finished ahead of me. I should have been ahead of him in qualifying. You really cut your way through the field today. What was your strategy? Uh, just push foot to the floor. That's that's pretty much all about it. Foot to the floor, push a lot. But let's just um, say about the A. You no, scraped the I'm, walls a few yeah, times. Were you struggling for grip? Let's praise the sasses, I guess. Uh, did I really? I don't really remember myself doing that. I honestly don't really feel myself doing that, but Great. I'm just gonna say well, that. Everything. I guess. Okay, I don't think I hit the wall. Like I might have hit it like once, but it was wasn't a huge scrap or anything. So, Lando 
is doing better than me at the moment. He's uh, six points ahead of me in the rivalry. We're doing better than Giovinazzi, so we're going to be beating our first rival. And also, we got enough resource points, 250 resource points from that. We're yet to get that target. That target is very tough to get. So, next race, though. Remember me when I say... So, yeah, it's a very good performance. The team is even happy. you can see the current deal. Once negotiations begin, the team will make you an offer. You can accept if you like, but I strongly suggest we push for better terms. So the problem I had with this contract is that they give me an expected qualifying position of third. And I'm like, bro, chill. You know, the car ain't for third. There's Ferrari, there's Mercedes, there's Red Bull. The most we can do at some point it would be top they midfield this season, I guess, like Let's sixth or else. seventh. And unfortunately, the they just wouldn't really get on with There's my terms. I, do. Luckily, we had the team's original offer to I failed. Back, so we've agreed to those terms. We'll have another chance to negotiate down the road. So I failed pretty much. So I have failed to adjust the terms for the expected positions. That's all I was trying to, to adjust and they just wouldn't accept me. I don't know what's the problem with them, but I guess the expected qualifying position from then and on will be third. There's no chance we're gonna make that, even at my favorite circuit, which is gonna be next uh, tomorrow, pretty much. Probably there's gonna be an upload uh, tomorrow. And it's Spain, my favorite track, Spain, where I've won my first ever league race on Air Factor 2, and it was actually a double race, and I was both of them. That was an amazing experience. My favorite track, Spain. Barcelona, we, we will be there for F1 2019 career mode. But if you enjoyed that video, make sure you subscribe, make sure you follow me on Twitter and on Twitch because I'm gonna be streaming probably on Christmas, not now, don't get your hopes up. So I'm gonna remind you on Christmas that I'm, that I'm gonna be streaming with some of my mates, some Call of Duty or some something like that because your boy does that quite often. But that was it for today, guys. If you enjoyed, smash the like button, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Thank you for 500 subscribers, it's amazing. 500 subs, I'm very happy. So, yeah, about the next video, it's probably gonna be again F1 2019. I'll catch you later. Goodbye. Ladies and gentlemen, place your turntable in front of your guests. Yeah. Set the volume control in your stereo system at the preferred listening level. Ladies and gentlemen, beat rock, beat rock.